As nuclear power plants age, can they withstand the effects of climate change? That's a big question. And last week we looked at the resiliency questions being posed for FPNL about its Turkey Point nuclear power plant. But tonight, a more pressing problem, one that still hasn't been fixed and that won't meet a critical deadline. Our follow up is tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. Far beneath the surface of the Turkey Point nuclear power plant in South Miami-Dade, undetected for decades, a giant plume of super salty water has been seeping into the Biscayne Aquifer, the source of our drinking water. It is going down about 80 feet. It's hitting what's called the confining layer, and it is spreading out in every direction. It's possible that there's still some connection between the cooling canal system and the bay water. Miami Waterkeepers Dr. Rachel Silverstein has been closely monitoring the development of the plume emanating from the plant's cooling canal system an intricate grid of 32 canals dug out in 1973 to circulate water used to cool the plant's two nuclear reactors. It's the only cooling canal system like it in the world, created after scientists discovered the plant was polluting Biscayne Bay. So in the early 70s, when the plant was first commissioned, the bay water that was being used to cool the reactors was being circulated back into the bay. And what scientists soon realized is that hot water was wreaking havoc on this fragile ecosystem, impacting marine life, killing seagrass. So the DLJ then ordered FPL to create a closed loop cooling system that wouldn't pollute anything outside the property. That seemed to work until it didn't. The canals are not lined. And in 2011, South Florida Water Management determined that in fact, a hyper saline plume had been discharging from the cooling canals, moving westward past the plant's boundaries and impacting the surrounding groundwater. The water from the cooling canal system has been heated and all of the salt and other contamination, radioactive isotopes in the water gets very dense. That dense water sinks into the holes in the rock that it's sitting on top of and into the groundwater below. That groundwater is the Biscayne Aquifer. And though the super salty plume has not yet reached the part of the aquifer that currently supplies water to Miami-Dade's 3 million residents, for years, it's been spreading for miles. And it has at times been clocked, moving at a rate of over a foot a day towards the drinking water wellhead for the Florida Keys and a small Miami-Dade County wellhead that's located nearby and, and into Biscayne Bay. The subject of several lawsuits, the state and the county ultimately gave FPL 10 years to fix the problem and retract the plume by putting in extraction wells. So they basically put giant straws into the ground to suck the plume out of the ground and pull the plume back to the property line of the plant. FPL recently admitted it will not make the 10-year deadline to clean up the plume, but in a statement to Local 10, the utility says it's making progress and that the hydraulic well system it installed has stopped the plume from spreading. Over a six-year period, the well system has removed more than 36 billion gallons of hypersaline groundwater, which is a significant reduction. I use Oregon Mine Foundation. But the county says it's not enough and that the plume is still impacting the deeper parts of the aquifer. It's why we've asked FPL to go back to the drawing board and come up with a better plan to better retract the entirety of the plume, even at the deeper levels of the aquifer. Neither the county nor FPL have given an estimated timeline for when they anticipate the whole plume to be retracted. And that, says Silverstein, is worrisome. We're waiting to see what the county is going to do and require them to adjust the plan in order to meet targets. What's going to happen next? We are all in this South Florida community connected to the fate of Turkey Point. And if Turkey Point is safe and resilient, then we can be safe and resilient. And if Turkey Point is not safe and resilient, then we will not be either. We are all connected. And even though they still have not fixed the problem, FPL has been able to use this remediation plan to negotiate new Clean Water Act permits from the state of Florida. And as we mentioned last week, a license extension from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to keep the plant operating through the year 2052. Again, Miami Waterkeeper is challenging that license extension. We will keep you updated. For much more on the story, including FPL's full statement to Local 10, scan that QR code. It'll take you straight to the Don't Trash Our Treasure page on Local10.com.
so complicated, but you really broke it down for us, and it yeah, is kind of frightening. Yeah, it's very complicated. Yeah. The bottom line, our drinking water right now is not being, imp not being impacted by this, but the deeper parts of the aquifer, mm -hmm. that plume is still impacting right. that area, right? And that plume still contains that hypersaline water, right. that radioactive isotope, that tritium is still present there. And FPL has been mandated by that consent decree by both the county and the state to clean the whole thing up. Right. The big question is, there is no timeline, so when right. will this happen? When? 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 That is the big question.